Hello everybody, I'm Elsa and welcome back to Book Bar and welcome to my favorite video of the month to make, my monthly stats and faves. Starting off strong, this month was not great. Uh, it's my lowest reading month, it's my lowest page number wise, it's just, it wasn't great. Um, I think it's my most DNFs, like not the best, but it's okay. I've already started May off strong um, and yeah, I ended April off on a great note so yeah if you want to see the first nine books i read in the month i will have that linked up above if you want to see the second 11 books i have that'll be linked up above um uh, so yeah like i said i read 19 books and i had two dnfs for a total page length of 7512 pages my average page count was 395 pages which i feel like is pretty high not bad i read six five star books five four and a half star books four five star books one three and a half star book one three star book and one two and a half star book for an average rating of 4.29 stars um, which is great i had no books that i didn't rate because i was terrible and didn't read non-fiction so yeah i read two physical books five ebooks listened to nine audio books and i mixed media three books I read 11 books with representation, which at least that's over the 50% mark, um, but my author rep was only four, so not great. Like really bad. This month was really bad. So I think luckily I was a, like, I've read more than 25% a couple months. So I'm still at like an average of over 25%, but that was bad. Like I need to be more intentional about picking up authors that are marginalized. So yeah, uh, I read seven new releases five 2023 releases one released one book released in between 2000 and 2009 and three books released between 2010 and 2019 which is crazy uh, i listened to five audiobooks from the library i read one ebook from the library i read three books physically i don't know how that when i read two books physically i think because one of my mixed was i read it i mostly read it that's what it was. One of my mixed media books was mostly read physically. So yeah. Um, I read one ARC ebook. I read four books from KU. Two books were listened to by Anyplay and three I owned audibly. And then this is the craziest stat to me. I read 11 traditionally published books and only eight indie books. That's wild. Like usually that number is completely flipped i feel like i've been leaning more towards traditional i don't know why um but there's been well and i because i count bloom as like a traditionally published book so like wild love which i read this month that counts as traditionally published unsteady i read it again this month i read the listen to the audiobook which is the traditionally published version so i mean i'm still reading like authors that were originally indie they've just been picked up by publishers so I wouldn't say it's like completely crazy, but it is still pretty wild to me. The Things Built Behind by Lucy Score, another book that was originally indie, or I think it was always traditionally published, but the author wasn't an indie author. So like things like that where I'm counting Bloom as a traditionally published, public, as traditionally published. So yeah, that is why. I don't know why I just talked, went on that rant, but yeah. That's why I think because a lot more authors are getting picked up now. So, which is great for the authors. So, yeah. <laughs> Moving on. I read one arc, one reread, three, but only three books made me cry this month. I have not been reading a lot of books that have been emotional. Um, and I only read six new to me authors. So not, again, not great. I need to get better about doing things like reading more new to me authors. Uh, I read four contemporary books two historical romances, two fantasy romances, six sports romances, three small town romances, which I know sports and small town would are technically contemporary romances, but I like to separate them. Uh, one manga and one historical fiction this month. 32% um, of my reads had a blue cover, 5% had a white cover, 5% had a purple cover, 16% had a pink cover, 16% had a yellow cover, and this is like primarily that color. 11% um, had a green cover, 11% had a black cover, and 5% had too many colors for there to be like one specifically like main color. 
Uh, and now for the best part, my top five. So coming in at number five is actually a book I only rated four stars. And I did have a different another five star, but like that book hasn't stuck with me the way that this book has. And I think once I continue the series, this book has a potential to be a five star book. And that is Spark of the Everflame by Penn Cole. I don't want to say much about this book because I think part of the, the greatness of it is going into it blind. Um, do know it does take a little while to get into it. Like it took me probably a week to read 50%. But once I read that 50%, like I was in it and I was really invested. Um, but basically it follows a girl named Diem who in the prologue, her mother goes missing after talking to this guy. And we don't know why. Diem also has this lady come up to her and is like, you've returned or something like, something like that. And there's a lot of like stuff that Diem doesn't know. And she's like confused. And the lady says, stop taking the flame root powder. So DM does and like things start happening and she starts noticing some changes and she meets Prince Luther and yeah, things go from there. She's betrothed or there's this guy, Max. I think his name's Max. He wants to be engaged to her. Um, he is part of the like rebellion, rebellious group. And so she kind of joins with them. I don't know. It's crazy. It's wild. Fantastic. I ended up talking about it way more than I was going to, but I loved it. And like I said, I gave it only gave it four stars because the first 50% was tough to get through. Like it's just a slog, but I have heard nothing but good things about the second book. And I think once I finish the series as a whole and I go back and like, I can appreciate, I'll, re I'll appreciate the little like thing, subtle nods that happened in the first book. So yeah, that's why that one, even though I had a different five star, I had five, five stars, well it's six, but my reread, I'm not counting. Um, but so yeah, that's why that one is there and not my other five star. Long story short. <laughs> then number four, I have Burnout by Rebecca Jenshack. This is my new favorite Rebecca Jenshack. This is Avery and Knox. I read this for my new release log. Um, absolutely adored it. Fantastic. Um, Avery is recovering from a knee injury. She is an Olympi Olympic gymna gymnast, medal winning gymnast. And Knox has just been dropped from his motorcycle team, his motorcycle racing team. And he had decides to like join his best friend doing like tricks and things, but he's struggling with the tricks and his best friend culture is like, Hey, actually my girlfriend's roommate and best friend helped me significantly with this stuff. Maybe she could help you. Things don't get off on the right foot. Um, Knox is very damaged because of some stuff with his parents. Uh, but yeah, it was a great time. I loved it. Like I said, I gave it five stars. <laughs> All the rest of these got five stars. Then I had Learn Your Lesson by Candy Steiner. Um, something about Candy Steiner writing sex lessons that just is, it gets me every time. Um, by that, I mean she's done it twice that I know of and I loved both of them. Like I'm pretty sure Blindside was on my top five or would have been if I was, wasn't was filming when I did it. But yeah, this follows Chloe and Will and Will is also called Daddy P. He's the goalie for the hockey team. He takes care of everyone, uh, but he needs someone desperately to help him with his daughter. Uh, he is a single father due to a tragedy with his ex-wife and everyone that has like applied to be his nanny has just been awful and like only been doing it to get after him. And he needs someone that is not just trying to get him to sleep with them. And in comes Chloe, Ava's teacher, kindergarten teacher, and she agrees to help them out and things go from there. And of course, he soon learns that Chloe is quite inexperienced and needs some help. So they agree to do some stuff and to have some fun lessons. So yeah, fantastic. Loved it. So good. Definitely a new release everyone should read. Actually, these next two books, these next two books are also new releases. So next up we have Wild Love by Elsie Silver. Um, something about Elsie Silver's daddies just gets me. This is Ford Grant, who is Willa's brother, older brother. And Ford is opening a music studio in his, in this small town that he like would summer at every year. And he's always kind of had a thing for his best friend West's little sister. And Things just go from there. Um, Rosie's always secretly had a crush on him too, but they were very like frenemy-ish when they were young. And Rosie, due to some circumstances, has had to come home. And uh, Ford offers her a job and things go from there. Um, also Ford 
has this 12 year old girl show up on his doorstep and say hey you're my dad uh, because he donated some sperm when he was young and dumb and so it was far-fetched yes but I really enjoyed it and I'm so glad that I read it do wish that this had the people cover I wish that that wasn't just the ebook but it's fine because all my other LC books are people covers but it's fine it's fine I still loved it still five star then my number one book for the month was just for the summer by Abby Jimenez this book made me cry it made me laugh it made me feel all of the feels I loved it so much uh, this is Justin and Emma and Justin has posted on a reddit thread like am I the a-hole because he named his dog after his best friend because his best friend is now in getting engaged to the love of his life who happens to be Justin's most recent ex but that is not why Justin named his dog after his best friend he is very happy for his best friend he is over the moon he named his dog after his best friend because his best friend uh yeeted out of the lease early which I don't know why I just said it like that, but his best friend got out of the lease early. Like he knew he was going to move in with the girl. And so Justin ended up living in this horrible apartment. And so he, to make himself feel better, he got a dog, the ugliest dog he could and named it after his best friend. Um, but so Justin posts on this Reddit thread. And of course he says something about the curse, how every girl he dates that after they break up, finds the love of their life. So now women just want to date him to break up with him. And Emma in walks Emma, and she is not in walks, but come in, enter the chat is entering the chat is Emma, who also after every guy she dates, they find the love of their life, the love of their lives. And so they start Emma and Justin start chatting because they realize, oh, we both have this affinity of dating people that then find the love of their lives. And so they agree, well, maybe we should date and we'll break the curse for each other. Well, of course, of course things are going to happen. There's going to be that moment. And yeah, sparks are going to fly. <laughs> but yeah, I adored it. I loved it. Of course. It was my favorite book of the month. So Abby Jimenez did it again. But yeah, that is my May, May, my April stats and faves. If you made it to the end of this video, leave me a sunshine emoji for just for the summer. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all the fun stuff. It really helps me out. And I'll talk to you all in the next one. Bye.